All right, hello, my people of YouTube. I'm gonna make a review on kind of this camper setup, but the main thing is this Vivor diesel heater that we picked up about a month ago. Um, set it up, did a little trial run here in Arizona because we were heading to Colorado. We literally just got back, truck's still a mess and still dripping from the snow. But uh, I wanted to do a, a review on this. I've seen a lot of guys on YouTube post in their shops that they use them. I've seen guys use them on like uh, truck toppers and stuff like that. So we had some real world experience with this thing and it was amazing. Best hundred dollars I think I ever spent. So I'm gonna run autistically through this. I don't edit my videos, so I'm sorry, but I will kind of show you my setup and what I did and what worked and what didn't work and kind of my honest review of this little $100 Chinese Vivor heater. Um, so yeah, run through it. This truck camper, we just did 1,400 miles, just got back, left Thursday, came home Sunday over Thanksgiving 2023. Went from Lake Havasu City, Arizona, did the million dollar highway um, from Durango over through Silverton, down into Uray, Colorado, and um, then looped out and went over Lizard Head Pass by Telluride and you know, did a bunch of miles in, in the snow. There was a, a blizzard. The lows that we camped in over the last three nights, um, the lowest low was seven degrees Fahrenheit. The highest low was 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So all well below freezing temperatures and this is an old camper that is from the 70s that I rebuilt. I put some foam, uh, like one inch insulation between all of the framing that I did because I actually had to take 18 inches off of this because these old campers, if you remember your grandpa probably had one, they only made them in a long bed. So I took 18 inches off the front, rebuilt the whole front of the thing, radiused it so it looked old, and basically anywhere I could throw insulation I did, but this thing is in no way efficient, the, the camper itself. I mean, it's got really thin plywood sides on the inside. The bed area is three quarter inch ply and there's no insulation. So just kind of setting this up so you know that this is not an efficient unit and this thing kept it hot. So I'll get into this in just a second. And I'm actually, I'm gonna fire it up because it takes about, uh, about three minutes for everything to start operating. So I'm gonna kick this thing on. I've been having problems with my remote. That's one thing, there we go. So I think my battery that I got from China for the remote doesn't really work that well. So what you'll notice is that you'll get a remote. It's got, if you get this one, this is a 5K unit, I believe. I think they make a bigger unit. I ordered a smaller one. I honestly don't know the difference. I don't know. There's nothing from China that tells me which size is which. So that's the first thing. I opted for a smaller one because we obviously have a small camper. So I got the one with the remote. This was $104 from Vivor. So what you'll notice is that when you kick it on, obviously I'm doing it inside. I have the garage door cracked and stuff. This thing doesn't smoke very much, but back on topic here, there you can see the little bit of smoke that's coming out and that'll clear up after it starts burning correctly. Like really there's no exhaust smell. There's no, when this thing runs, there's no odor really at all. So this is what you'll see. This is going and we'll just let that do its thing for a couple minutes and you'll hear the fuel pump kick on and it'll kind of ramp up a little bit and then it'll throttle down because I have it on the lowest setting right now. And that's all adjustable on this remote. You can get more or less. So that is the rundown on startup. It's very basic. I watched a bunch of these videos. This is the manual I got, which is not helpful at all. Um, I watched a bunch of these videos and I saw some guys had to prime them. This thing straight out of the box. I poured diesel in it. I hit the on button. It, there you go, you can hear the fuel pump. So that's the fuel pump starting to pump and it'll ramp up. Um, this thing straight out of the box did that. I didn't have to prime it, I didn't have to hold buttons, I didn't have to do anything, it literally did it all for me. So, um, kind of run through this thing. The exhaust system on this, I wasn't really a fan of. 
I don't like the look of these blocks that I had to put under it, but the way they manufactured it, the exhaust port points straight down and there's not enough clearance to actually 90 this and, and kick it up. And the heat that comes off of this, I didn't want it too close to the diesel container and I wanted to be able to take off the cover. So this is about the best I could do aesthetically, which I'm not a fan of. But honestly, when you're camping, it kind of works because if it gets windy or anything, you know the unit's not gonna blow over and it makes it kind of stable. And everything fits inside of this crate, which when we travel, I wanted to be able to put this unit in here with the diesel tank and the hose and everything. That way, in case diesel spilled, it was contained to a crate. Um, we just got back from this trip and you can see there is diesel on the top here. This port right here, this vent tube, we were up at 12,000 feet elevation. Um, that vent port will leak. So it's kind of nice having it there and I actually put a towel over the top of it. So, okay, so you got the exhaust squared away. This is about the best aesthetically I could make it and it'll quiet down here in a second. It's just throttling up on startup. <laughs> um, around here to the vent tube in the back. This is gonna be your air inlet. That's your fresh air that's sucking in and going into your into your camper from here. This um, is just another inlet that I stuck. They give you a little bracket. I stuck it there, made sure there was no, no fuel line or anything on the backside and just secured that there. And that also goes underneath the unit. <laughs> um, I took this whole thing apart when I got it because I read a bunch of reviews and Everybody said that the bolts were loose, all the fuel lines were loose and stuff like that. And there you go, you can hear it throttling down now. That's about your normal sound on low. But back to what I was saying. I took the whole thing off. There's just four clips and this whole cover comes off of this thing. You do have to take the fuel cap off and the cover will come off. And uh, the fuel line was actually kinked to where it wasn't getting any fuel. And this was straight from the factory. So expect to do a few modifications, but it was very, very simple. I mean, it was, it, it took two minutes to repair the fuel line and just kind of tighten everything. So back to the heater, there's a couple different things that I did. And I have, I, I don't, I haven't seen a video on this yet. This is kind of my, my mess of connectors that I've tried. And originally I was going to try to use a cigarette lighter. And I actually put a port on the outside of the camper that I could plug this in. And I had a hard time finding a cigarette lighter that was rated for um, what this thing uses on startup. It doesn't use a ton of power, but on startup it uses more. And what happened was I wasn't getting a good connection and this started to get hot. So after buying a few of them, connecting one of them, that got hot. I bought a couple more. I kind of just shit can the whole idea because what was happening is even though this is a new 12 volt cigarette lighter port, I wasn't getting a good connection. And it just, I didn't want to get somewhere and have this thing when it's seven degrees outside, wiggle loose and come out of the port or weather get into the port. So I opted out of the um, cigarette lighter idea. And what I did was I went and got from Walmart a trailer plug. And this is just my jumper and I'll show you why I made a jumper here shortly. It's just, I keep it in my crate just to have. So <clears throat> what I did, this thing, the wiring comes right here from the factory. They give you a, I believe it's a 20 amp fuse here that comes off of the heater. I used this plug right here and I used two of the connections because you only have a positive and a negative. And this makes a very solid connection. It's been proven with travel trailers and boat trailers forever and ever. So this is the connection that I use to power that diesel heater from the power on the inside of the camper, which all I used was one of the uh, Walmart $69 um, auto batteries, 12 volt batteries, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So to the, to the ducting, because the ducting that they give you is an absolute joke. That black duct they give you, it doesn't stretch 
It's about a foot long and it's pretty much good for nothing. And what you're gonna find on these heaters is that this tube right here is a three inch. Well, your standard dryer and other vent hose is four inch. So I found this is actually made for um, like fart fans and it's metal and it collapses down really tight. And I got these hose clamps that have the um, yellow piece on here. So when we get there, I don't have to have any tools. I can just connect it. And I use some air conditioning tape right here just because this connection is gonna be getting tight and loose, tight and loose. I didn't want it to um, blow a hole through this. So my ducting, this was about, I think it's about $9 from Home Depot. And you can see inside here what I did. I got also a three inch adjustable 90. Um, it adjusts in three or four different places. And all I did was got a three inch hole saw and I cut a hole in the side of the camper. And that is kind of the setup for the, um, the inlet to the camper. So we've gone through all that. Now we'll get into the inside. Vivor gives you this little vent right here and it just, it adjusts and it snaps off and it has an inlet piece right here. Basically this back side here is a male side that slides through. So what I did was I used that three inch piece that they give you, which is really shitty as far as length between this wall and that wall. I actually used that piece that they gave me, stuck this thing on there and this is now our heat source, which is nice because if you want it to go down on your feet, you can do that. If you want it to go up this way, like now the heat is coming up in the camper and that actually works out really well. Um, I'll show you the, oh, also carbon monoxide detector. So it's very, very unlikely that this exhaust is going to get sucked into that inlet. Um, but, for cheap insurance, go buy yourself. This thing was $19.98 at Home Depot and it runs on batteries. It's a, just a standalone carbon monoxide alarm, um, kind of cheap insurance so that way you don't die. <laughs> so I, I, I highly doubt, I guess if the wind was really right and it was cycling there, it might happen. But as long as you have this thing set up this way, there's no exhaust that's gonna get in here, but for 20 bucks, I've got my dog and my fiance in here and sometimes my kids when we go camping, it's cheap insurance. So getting into the power supply. So all I did was I got, sorry, I got one hand here and this is very difficult. I got an Everstart Walmart battery and it was the highest cranking, it was the highest numbers that I could get. Uh, I think it's a 24F is the series. And this thing, it lasted way longer. I mean, it, it's got plenty of power. So got a couple connections there that do the, uh, the positive and the negative there. And uh, I ran it. If you can see it, oh boy. I don't know if you can see it. But you can see the ducting right there. And you can see the wires coming through. Yes, I know it's not real professional, but that just gives you an idea of what all that looks like. So, yeah. So right now, we've got hot air coming out of here. I know it's a video, so you can't tell. And I know I suck at videoing, but hopefully somebody finds this useful because I couldn't find anything like it on YouTube. But, um... So yeah, that's the setup. This is my 12 volt port. This 12 volt port is wired to that battery that you just saw. This also right here, what's plugged in, I figured I don't have anything. I don't have this hooked up to the truck alternator or anything like this. It's just a standalone isolated battery because I didn't want to get somewhere, have this thing suck too much power and not be able to get somewhere in my truck. So I bought a standalone battery and my thought was I had a solar panel from Harbor Freight. It is a, oh, there's the solar panel. Here's the information on it. 12 volt, 25 watt solar panel. This thing's about 68 bucks at Harbor Freight. And when we get somewhere, all we do is set this up, 
wire it back here or just all it does is plug in here and so wherever the sun is set your solar panel in there and then if you've used a bunch of um, power over the night with the heater you can recharge it with the solar panel so that's kind of my thought process on how to recharge that unit so that way the following night as long as it's not cloudy or something like that we can have more power and what i actually did was i stuck this solar panel in the window and as we drove it was plugged in so it was charging whenever the sun was on that side so there's that i'm going to power this thing off so you don't have to listen to clicking oh actually i'll ramp it up if the remote will work so then you can see power this up you can hear it the fuel pump ticking more like i said there's no exhaust coming out of here like you can stick <laughs> i wouldn't say to, to do it but like it's hot it's very hot but in no way does this smell like a diesel truck driving down the road or anything like that it's very very clean like i said i'm inside the garage there's nothing coming out of that as far as diesel exhaust which is cool so um word of caution when you ramp this up this tube it does get very hot so i mean most of the time you're camping it's going to be below freezing so that's kind of nice because this is not an insulated tube we didn't have room for an insulated tube so yeah so i'll power it down so that's powered down i'm trying to think if there's anything else for this we'll power it off there you go it tells you stop heating and at this point, don't unplug your unit yet. What it's doing is it's running everything out of the system and it takes about three minutes for everything to fully shut down. You don't want to not let it shut down because it's burning all the fuel, it's doing all that stuff. And it's just, it's smart just to leave the thing and let it, let it do its work for about three minutes. And at the end of it, you'll probably hear it. It'll say like, thanks for visiting or some kind of weird thing. So, okay. So now that I've done that, You've got the rundown on the camper, you've got the rundown on the heater. Talk about fuel usage. So this thing, we ran it on the lowest setting you could run it on in all of those temperatures between seven degrees and 22 degrees at night. And we ran it for 10 and a half to 12 hours every single day for three days during the night. And this thing took, I, I brought a one gallon tank or can, extra can, and uh, it's a gas can, but I put diesel in it, obviously. Um, the unit was full when I took it camping and we used right at a gallon and you can kind of see the side, probably a gallon and a half. So <clears throat> the first night I wanted to test it and that was when it was in the 20s, low 20s, I had a 20 ounce water container that was clean and dry and I took the diesel out of here poured it in my water container, and then I filled this up after we had used it. And for 10 and a half hours of running on the lowest setting, it took 40 ounces of diesel to fill that tank back up, which was pretty awesome because we it kept the inside of the camper really, really warm to the point where we had very thin blankets on. And at, at one point we got too hot and had to open the roof vent. And keep in mind, it's well below freezing where we were staying. So the fuel consumption on this thing is really, really low, but we only ran it on low. So I can't tell you how it does on any setting other than low because we never needed it for anything other than the low setting. So I can't give you the, um, as far as battery usage goes, I don't have a meter, unfortunately. I think some guys have done a review and it, it kind of gives you a breakdown the, the manual is really poorly written in China. It's in, it's in, it's in English, but it's, it's Chinese English. So it's hard to tell. So I can't tell you the power consumption that it takes, but I know if you have a, a good battery, a 12 volt battery, the thing should be absolutely fine for days and days and days. So I don't know about that, but, um, so to this real quick, this jumper, so what I did, and I'll, I can't unplug it yet, I built, I made this jumper so that way we have power at the camper, obviously, that stays in the camper. 
and we have that plug that unplugs right there. So the male end is obviously on the, on the heater because I didn't want exposed ends that could short. So this side coming off of the camper is the female. So what I did was I got this jumper and wait a second. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's right. So what I can do, man, I had a brain fart there. What I can do is when I unplug the heater, I can plug this in and then, so I'm not exclusively using this for the camper for my shop here that I've got in the winter time. What I can do is I can get a 12 volt power source or one of my spare batteries that I've got sitting around and I can stick alligator clips on this and I can stick my heater inside the shop here. And now I have a way to power the heater. Um, so it's not exclusively going to there. So just an idea if anybody is interested. So I hope this was useful. I know I probably rambled on. I don't edit my videos, I apologize. So I'm sorry if you had to watch stuff you didn't want to see, but it was just, there was a lot of stuff I had seen that didn't really explain. Thanks for using, I wish you a safe journey. Thanks for using, I wish you a safe journey. So when that happens, you know that you can unplug the power, everything is done, and you're ready to rock and roll. So back to what I was saying, this is probably the most efficient heater I've ever seen. You don't have to worry about carbon monoxide like some of those buddy heaters, which is really nice. We were well below freezing and this thing cranked. Um, I think if I could do it again, um, I would probably get, they have the vertical one where the fuel tank is on the top, heater unit is on the bottom. If you look on Vivor's site, you'll see them where they actually look more like a box and the diesel tank is on one side and the heating unit is on the other and it keeps them more low profile, but it has a wider footprint. I think if I was to do it again, I would probably get the one that is shorter and wider. Um, you still, it still ports out of the bottom for the exhaust, so you'd still have to do this, but I feel like it would be more stable. I feel like this one, if you really got into some wind, I mean, those feet kind of remedy it, but I just, I think a lower profile one might, might be nice. And what I could do then is I could put a lid on this with the heater unit, put a lid on it. And when we go camping, I keep the thing right in there. And when we get anywhere, I just pulled the whole crate out. I could put a lid on it and I could stack other stuff. So that's about the only thing I don't like about this heater unit. So hopefully I've given you good ideas. Um, thing cranks, best hundred bucks I've ever spent. Um, like I said, this, all these parts you can get at Home Depot. That trailer plug connection you get at Home Depot, it's like $12. This hose is like 7 or $8, I think, at Home Depot. Um, and get creative, but do some wintertime camping. The cold always kept us from doing winter camping, and we had a great trip, 1,400 and some odd miles in this thing, and didn't have to worry about I mean, we were in snowstorms, and we didn't have to worry about any type of temperature, this thing did when it was snowing. You do have to watch the snow level of buildup because you have your intake on the backside. So just make sure that the thing's up high and up off the ground that snow is not going to pile up and block that intake. But other than that, the thing cranked. It worked great. So thanks for watching. Sorry I rambled. Um, if you have any questions that I maybe missed, throw it in the comments and I'll try to answer it because I've probably gone through it. Um, but yeah, happy camping.